never love something so much in life, something that you think about all day, you obsess about it, you might dream about it, talk about it with friends, it pretty much defines who you are. And then you come to the realization, I'm too old, I can't physically or mentally do this anymore. That's the feeling I got as I was walking up here tonight. <laughs> Fucking you ever been at work and wish a plane crashed on you? <laughs> I need some crash. I really do. <sighs> there really is no justice in this world. For once, I'm not going to complain about somebody infinitely more talented than myself. Dare I say, this will be one of the more positive videos you'll find on this channel. Rich Voss is a comedic legend. From his humble beginnings, he worked his way up from rotten mouth Plainfield crack addict to the porcelain tooth stand-up icon we see today. Boasting a career in comedy that's lasted 37 years with a legacy of humor on cult classic shows like Opie and Anthony and Tough Crowd, shows that continue to gain an audience on YouTube to this day. And he was one of the few comedians ballsy enough to call out Greg when he bombed. In Jersey, dummy. In Pinebrook, New yeah. Jersey. Oh, they got yeah. elves in the back writing jokes. <laughs> well, hold on, we're going to get a call on that one. Uh... <laughs> Voss has helped craft the comedic style of many of today's largest stand-up acts. And he's remained humble throughout all of it, still willing to crack jokes at his own expense. Unlike others. So why the hell is he still playing restaurants? I always like to work a place where... At any point, I can get bit by a bat. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a fucking horrific. Oh, <laughs> next week, I'm doing a tree house. As hilarious as it may be that Voss is still doing the very thing he was mocked for 11 years ago. What's the fucking comedy shop? Uh, it's, it's, I've fucking, never heard of, it's, a small, it's a small <laughs> Italian restaurant, and they have a comedy club in it once a month, but the fucking food... <laughs> I, I went out to dinner there last time I was here. <laughs> like, uh, to me and he just yeah. fucking starts laughing at him. And the problem is, <laughs> oh, once a month, <laughs> comedy club in an Italian <laughs> restaurant? No, it's not. Calm down oh before my you God. attack. To where Captain McCluskey got shot. <laughs> 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 this sad reality says more about the pitiful state of the fractured ONA audience than it does about our pal Rich Voss. I'm not going to play you any clips of Voss's prepared material, because I understand the importance of preserving a comic's act when so much of comedy is dependent upon catching the audience off guard. But I will be using some of the clips of Voss's improv and crowd work to illustrate just how capable the 64-year-old is at still winning over an audience. This set is from 2021 at an outdoor patio behind a French restaurant in New Jersey. <laughs> Sorry, it made me laugh. And tragically, this material was delivered to a crowd of less than 60, with an average age of 58. I only work clubs where there's more hanging lights than audience members. <laughs> when I first saw the location for this act, I was genuinely worried for our friend Voss. Not only was the crowd filled with gray-haired, ornery Jersey trash, but the atmosphere left something to be desired as well. A noisy outdoor venue, fake vines substituted for curtains, and the tiniest stage I've ever seen in my life. If we had to relocate this show, we could do it in seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like we wanted to move it to the street. No problem. I'll get the stage. And the backdrop on myself. <laughs> you know what's depressing when the fake plants are down <laughs> You know, I only do comedy when I can hear birds in the background. <laughs> and it's <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> uh, anybody going to that town? <laughs> It was at this point that I started to wonder, would Voss play it safe? It was a family-friendly scene. Maybe he'd tone down his brutal brand of humor and present himself as Richard, family man and reformed drug addict. But I was wrong to be worried. Voss, apparently, is no coward. The set was brutal. 
and despite playing to a crowd of social security collecting dullards, he killed. I had a fucking career. <laughs> in a driveway. Hold on, there's a buck on me. I get a fucking kick at this show. He didn't hold anything back. Joking about gay marriage, the pathetic depths of his career, interracial relationships, and even everyone's favorite religion of peace. You're half Palestinian. Okay, you see this little area here? That's my fucking area. I don't care what you do with that whole area out there. Do what you want. Play with your rocks. I don't give a fuck. Cut off your other women's clits. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> All right. I was genuinely surprised to see just how much of his one hour set was improv. Some people will say crowd work is easy, but those people are stupid. Unlike radio, where interacting with the listeners is tantamount to effectively halting whatever momentum the show had, playing off a crowd in a stand up setting can add an entirely new dynamic to the set. It shows real balls to throw out untested jokes not knowing if they'll resonate or only further piss off the crowd you're trying to entertain. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Any idiot can write out jokes beforehand and get laughs. It's the truly gifted ones that can pull funny out of their ass on the spot. It's the most aggravating thing on the planet. <laughs> no, I think it's next to your voice. <laughs> Okay, I think your voice and then passing the checks out is the second most aggravating. Voss is sadly of a dying breed. Comedians who would rather risk bombing and offending the audience than those who would choose to play it safe with crowd pleasing applause breaks. We live in a world of say nothing, pontificating, desperate comedians, and the world needs more people like Voss willing to rock the boat. So I'll ask again. Why the fuck is he still playing restaurants? I do not know, and that is what puzzles me. Well, I think I might have the answer. It's our fault. Regular people don't know Voss. It's only us autists still dedicated to a radio show now seven years off the air that recognize Voss's undisputed talent. A man that can tear apart others but just as easily take a brutal beating at his own expense. Friday's my anniversary, and I'm deciding whether to cancel. What, ten years either. since you've given up? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I just want to think of Godfather references for this idiot in an Italian restaurant that he might be working at. Or maybe Brenda and Eddie will show up. <laughs> Fucking asshole. That's the sign of a true comic. One who doesn't take himself so fucking seriously spending hours a day talking about the important role comedians play in society. What you're doing when you're doing stand-up is you're kind of exposing these truths that everybody kind of knows about but doesn't talk about, and it frees them in a way, like, yes, mm. yes! Like, there's, like, there's thoughts that are, they're there, but you gotta unearth them. You gotta mm, dust mm, them mm. off and show them to people, and they're like, yes! It's not that deep, Joe. It's not about unearthing the truth, you dumbbell curling thumb. It's about making people laugh. Opie and Anthony used to pack clubs with listeners for Voss and other comics like him. But since the show's destruction, sadly a lot of our favorite degenerates haven't been selling out like they used to. At least not in the literal sense. The Jim and Sam show doesn't get anyone excited to go out and see people like Bob Kelly or Rich Voss because the material on the show isn't remotely funny enough to draw crowds. Who's gonna go see Voss after hearing him talk about shoes with Mamory Roberts? It's not Rich's fault. When a person like Sam only sees Voss as a prop to lift his shirt and be laughed at, it doesn't give people the impression that he's worth seeing live. Come on. No, we'll do, we do a shirtless photo. We'll do, All right. Put the other ring on. Hold no, on, I know, LJ. I know. We'll just, we'll just take Rich, it off. put the other ring on, though. You gotta have the rings on. Yeah. Oh, my God. You can hear Jim Norton echoing the same frustration towards decreased audience turnout after Anthony Cumia's firing led to the unlistenably heinous show that was Opie and Jim. 
dude, it hurt my stand-up business. That show, and not, and I know some people didn't like my stand-up, but I watched my 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 draw even drop in a lot of cases. And I think a couple of things is people weren't listening to our show in the morning like they were to Opie and Anthony, obviously. And I think people just didn't associate it or associate me with something they were enjoying anymore. But despite Jim and Sam currently doing their best to drag down every former ONA guest to the pitiful depths their careers have sunk to, Rich Voss, much like Joe DeRosa's awful tattoo, keeps kicking them in the nuts. And he shouldn't be punished for the years of unlistenable radio JNS provided. I want to keep this relatively short, because for once I actually have a point to make. My original idea for the video was just a simple ha-ha, Rich Voss is doing a comedy show at a restaurant. But after seeing his set, my perspective was completely changed. Go out and see Rich Voss. He's fucking hilarious, and you and I already know that. There's no reason he should be playing restaurants, and even worse, having to cancel second appearances at said restaurant due to lack of ticket sales. I never got to see Patrice O'Neill live, and I regret that. For fuck's sake, my channel's name is based off one of his quotes. I think the nation is just tired. There's a new mood in the nation. What nation? The nation, you know what? We're tired of things that it's are just the nation, this paper, and you. I'm, really? the, I'm not the nation. I'm just speaking for me and funny. He was a true genius that sadly never got the respect and fame he deserved in life, only appreciated after death. Now, granted, Rich Voss isn't a genius, but I worry that Voss may be doomed to the same fate unless something changes. Forced to play shitty gigs until his untimely demise, only after to be appreciated as the legend we all took for granted. Buy tickets. Tell your friends. Spread the word. Do your fucking part. He's touring constantly and just as funny as he was all those years ago on ONA. I brought someone with me to see Voss perform, and even though this person was barely familiar with Rich, they walked away shocked by how good the set was despite the location. Here's a list of all Voss's upcoming gigs. I'll also leave a link in the description to his website, which lists all of his tour dates as well. If he's near you, go see him. It's worth it. I spent nearly a hundred bucks on tickets, drinks, and food, and I won't make any of that back because this godforsaken platform refuses to pay me. But it was worth it anyway if I convinced just one of you to go out and see Rich perform. I even bought one of the CDs Voss was of course selling outside his gig, and despite having no way to play it because it's fucking 2021 and who has a CD player, I'm glad I have it to look back on, and know I supported a man who's given me countless laughs over the years. It was still funny seeing him play outside of a restaurant though. I did my part. Now go do yours.